Hello everybody, today we're talking Penn Foster. See, this is a recap from my previous video. What are the consequences of plagiarism? And as you can see right there, look at my GPA. Oh, my GPA went down from 4.0 to 3.89. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about, um, you know, uh, what did I did I get my grade back <laughs> from last time? Since you know the plagiarism, how they gave me a one. Let's recap. Okay, so they gave me a one, and I had to retake the exam super simple like I could have easily gotten a hundred on that but you know I just wanted to show you guys what happens if you plagiarize and you know don't do it <laughs> I took a risk but we're also gonna be talking about practical English I got in a few questions about that especially the writing parts developing ideas and writing I'm gonna go over that and maybe give you a few tips and you know about it I mean, we're going to be comparing minds, but you know, <laughs> no plagiarism. Just take the ideas that I'm giving you and make it your own. Okay, so grade. Did I get my grade? Yes, I got the maximum of plagiarism. I got a 65. <laughs> so I got me a 65. So here's how it goes down, right? Um, boom and um a boom all right so here we have it let's see ashley is uh yep this is the one so i retook the exam super simple like i really if i didn't want to show you guys this i could have easily gotten 100. okay so this one is gonna be Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is going to be, let's look at writing first. I'm going to show you writing first so I could talk a little bit about that 65% and why it's not at 100%. Um, when you take a retake, the maximum you can get is a 65. That's what it is. We retake, the maximum is a 65. Developing my ideas, I got a 95, but I could have easily gotten 100 on that. It's a, something on me again, <laughs> being lazy okay so let's talk about writing first since that's the first one i got up all right so let's see let's see let's see okay so this is the writing part it says answer the questions below according to the instructions given please note that the response to both questions must include must be included in the same submission in order for your examination to be graded otherwise it will be returned to you for revision Write a composition using one of the topics listed below. Your composition needs to be three to five paragraphs long. It must contain an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. So pretty much, you write a story, right? Simple, is that right? For the purpose of this examination, sport is defined as an activity involving physical exertion and skills in which an individual or team competes against another or other for entertainment without a predetermined outcome. If you choose to explain why a certain sport is your favorite, please ensure that the chosen sport fits this definition. Okay, so they're gonna give me like a few of them. It's gonna be like four or five options. Uh, the one that I plagiarized, I chose to plagiarize the thing about snow and Eat whatever the fudge that was and this one see a little bit more professional looking right this one I chose argue for or against the limitation of speed limits let's read minds but remember don't plagiarize or you will get a zero okay so in my composition I have chosen to argue against limitations or speed limits 
that's one. <laughs> see, this, this is pretty much how I see things. I need to get a few sentences in and then bang and then bang bang and then I'm done. So, let's say one. I believe that the proper speed limits that are already in force help highways and communities stay safe. Speed signs such as community speed limits, school zone speed limits, and highway speed signs help by enforcing the drivers to slow down and be safe. Okay, so that would be my do, 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 my introduction. My introduction. I'm talking. I'm, I'm introducing the issue, which is, you know, am I? Is it the issue? Now I'm introducing the problem, or am I? Now, nah, whatever. It's, you're introducing the story. Let's just call it as that. I'm introducing the story. I'm introducing what I'm talking about. My point. Okay, so so the second, so this is done for, boom, damn. Usually I write three, right? So now, second one. Today, this is probably gonna be uh, the body, the body. Today we could turn on any news or social media platform and we will see that many people have lost their life due to speeding. I believe that we should have more limitations on highways where drivers would almost always go over the speed limit without thinking of consequences. Cars that are speeding and not following local speed signs of slowing down when taking a curve or when exiting the highway could result in death due to weather conditions such as rain or snow. So this is pretty much me introducing the problem, which is the body. First one, introducing the story. What am I talking about? Like, what is the point in all this? It's right here in the introduction. I'm introducing my point. In the middle i'm introducing the problem right like pretty much the body like here's what it is people are taking curves they're going too fast and i listen to speed signs the problem and you can write it about i mean you get the options here i forgot what the other ones were but you know pretty much body i mean like introduction the body and then the conclusion like the resolution my solution to this nationwide like how would you fix the problem right pretty much to me like the ending like i'm done here's the here's the last one right my solution to this nationwide issue would be to have more monitoring speech traps and police highway troopers to stop speeding vehicles and have the offender attend safety classes on why it's dangerous to not follow local speed signs and to show them the consequences of what happens when a vehicle has lost control on the roads alcohol is also a very big factor in crashes when speeding the two should never go together. Dot. Period. The end. Boom. That's done. Simple as that. I did the minimum amount of sentences. And voila. Also, what I do use is I use uh, something called... Duh, 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 duh. Uh, there is like websites out there that you could Google search. That you could just copy everything you wrote and... It like fixes your misspelling like you know sometimes you're just typing you're not really paying attention so you spell either something off or you're forgetting apostrophe or comma so like that what you would copy all this and paste it on that said website which i forgot what it is and then it'll have that all corrected for you so you don't have to turn in work that is spelled incorrectly okay so that is for the first one for the second one, write a letter of complaint, follow the rules of a formal letter and use the full block style. The complaint may be about anything you wish, such as malfunctioning equipment, poor building maintenance, or disruptive noises from a nearby business. You can base your letter on a true experience or you can make up all the details you need. Please note that a form letter or a template cannot be used in constructing your response to questions. Question two. Uh, when a form letter or template is used, you are given little to no thought to wording or formatting, and you are not actually creating your own complaint. You're simply filling in the blanks for someone else's work. Okay, here we go, number two. Number two is simple. It's a block. It's a full block style complaint. Pretty much like the letters you get in the mail here's what you'll include you include the name of anybody this is all made up all this is made up you could put you you could put me you could put 
anybody. Your dog, as long as it's a first and last name. So you would put first name, last name, um, the address, make up any address, space, a space bar, then the date, spell it out, November 12th, 2020. Then space again, and then you put the person, said person's information, who you are writing to. I put Miss Dot Elizabeth Elizabeth Don, and on the bottom I put the title of the person. She is the apartment manager, and the, the address. And then I said, "Of dear Mrs. Don, I wanted to take this opportunity to provide you with my complaint about the property that I rent from you." That's an introduction, pretty much. Okay. Man, my body. <laughs> Everything is always just introduction, body, and anyway. Just last week, somebody broke into my apartment from the back door when I was at work, and in result, damaged the door frame of the unit, so my door won't stay closed. That's my problem. I've also been attempted to call you, your number, but have not received an answer. And to me, that is not very professional. In my solution, please have somebody come over and fix this issue with my door before things escalate and I lose all my things and also hire security to monitor the area to prevent further issues. Bam, that was it, one and two. And here's my feedback. Hey bro, this is pretty much, she's just copying my name instead of typing it. Okay, so here's how I went down, <laughs> feedback. Ramon Santiago, no wait, that was me. <laughs> Sincerely, Ramon Santiago. Think sincerely, don't forget the sincerely part. Bam. Uh, here's the feedback from the teacher person. Everyone has experienced that shape who they are. I don't know, this person can't spell for shit and they're grading my stuff. <laughs> Everyone has experiences that shape who they are. Okay, I guess it makes sense now. <laughs> and what they believe. And you do a great job bringing, your, bringing yours to life for the reader. No matter how your past and your research have shaped you, it's important to present it respectfully and in as much detail as possible. Remember that anytime you write, your main goal is to take something you understand and bring it to someone else. Excellent work. Yeah. Right there. Excellent work. Yeah. Now my essay. It says, your essay uses too many strong details. From your experiences or experience yeah experience let's go with that you take the reader there to show them how you felt what you saw what you heard and other sensory descriptions continue working to hone your skills and aim to always cover the most specific ideas possible as they are related to your topic you avoid repeating yourself and do a great job keeping everything as clear as possible Bringing in as much detail as possible is a good approach to take in every essay. By using strong sensory information, you you bring your essay to life. Continue using proper names, a first-person point of view, and other similar elements to make your essay fascinating for other readers. Your letter gets right to the point and offers an effective inquiry into the problem by keeping it cool you show your dedication to improving the situation it's talking about the the property manager thing situation and demonstrate that you aren't just another angry customer you offer specific solutions this is crucial in any letter asking for change it's great to ask for change and much better to offer suggestions like give me security <laughs> um so on how it can be implemented given vague descriptions and making accusations is never a way to approach a problem you expect someone to solve like saying you broke into my house bitch <laughs> using the block letterhead is an, it's an efficient way to show the letters recipient how serious you are about your complaint Always use a similar heading to establish your professionalism before the letter even starts. Always include your full name and return address, as well as the full name and address of the recipient, and to avoid any confusion. Companies receive complaints every day. Using a formal letterhead shows them that you aren't just another angry person who wants to cause them problems. Now, like I said, 
because as a retake, the maximum grade I can get was a 65. So you saw that I got a 65, but in reality, what is this? What is this? A hundred. This would have been a hundred. But you saw how simple it was. I didn't really try much. I didn't do much. This is all simple stuff. But here's what I do. I just I pretty much just copy everything. And uh, I paste it, and after that, I just, you know, fill in the blanks, like, answer one, I deleted all the other options and kept the one I wanted, I put answer one, and then space, and boom, boom, bang, and the same thing here, and I sent it to them, see, examination, I would have gotten a hundred, here's the grading shot that they use, the instructor, all of them, excellent. Okay, now that one was the last, that one was writing, writing, let's see, so that one was writing, and now we're going to look at developing ideas, which I got on the five on, okay, so developing ideas, Okay, examination. Okay, this one's gonna ask a little bit of work from you, all right? So examination questions, it's pretty much, just read. That is like, this is really simple right here. All you gotta do is read. And like the answers are there. <laughs> so, I mean, by read, I mean read this, right? Examination question, answer each of the following questions according to the instructions given. Questions 1, A, B, based on the following paragraph. So let's talk about the paragraph. A trip to the ocean can be relaxing, can be a relaxing escape from the everyday pressure of life, pressures of life. A sailboat listening on the horizon provides a mental escape to faraway places. The rhythm of the ocean beating against the sand is sedating music to a troubled mind. A slow, gentle, Breeze can relax your tensions. You should always be careful to avoid overexposure to the sun at the beach. Question number one. Write the sentence that is the topic sentence of the paragraph. Wait a minute. Okay, so pretty much I'm giving you the answers right here. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I didn't think this far ahead. Hmm. Uh mm, whatever, I'm skipping that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know what? Okay. Writing sentence that's the topic of the paragraph. The topic of this sentence up here is talking about a trip to the ocean that can be relaxing that can be a relaxing escape from the everyday suppression life. See? Check mark. B. Write the sentence that is unrelated to the topic and can be eliminated. Well, I figured you should always be careful to avoid overexposure to the sun at the beach made no sense so i took that out there's four things to look for when you're proofreading in proofreading four things to look out for are misspelled words improper punctuation wrong use of sentence structure and tense agreement check mark complete the following two steps define the term cliche i answer an expression or idea that's lost its originality but then it says use cliche in a sentence that you create i wrote okay even while all slasher films are cliches from the great films from back in the days for real horror fans new slasher films remade have no originality 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 <laughs> they're just copies with different people in it they need to realize in acting the apple does fall far from the tree so 
a cliche in this sentence is that last that last thing I said the you know the apple does fall far from the tree how people say uh, it's always greener on the other side stuff like that anything like that and you'll get it you know bam ching okay now name and explain two types of pre-writing I wrote clustering a type of pre-writing that allows the writer to explore many ideas as soon as it comes to mind like you have all these ideas right and you just start like to me like I don't know how to explain it besides what I just read answer two: brainstorming a technique that designs to bring subconscious ideas into the conscious like Jimmy Neutron you know like when all those ideas come to your head and then you like a B C okay that's right here choose one of the prompts listed below write a five sentence paragraph using chronological order and include a topic sentence to explain the steps that you would take to complete one of the following tasks okay so those different options here i show c i show it's getting ready for work and the reason why i didn't get i got a 95 the reason why I got a 95 was because I was it was early in the morning and I got lazy. All I had to do was write one more sentence and it would have been a hundred. See? I could have had a hundred. But I don't know. <laughs> I did this to myself. I wrote, I picked the, a high school diploma that's important to my future. And writing that, you could come up with many ideas of why a high school diploma is important. High school diploma is important to my future because without it, my life would be in a pause state and furthering my education by enrolling in colleges or by affecting me negatively by not being qualified for jobs by future employers. Having a high school diploma would highlight my image and self-esteem. Acquiring a certification that shows my academic achievement is important to me so I can be a future role model to my children and teach them never to give up and that anything is possible if you work for it. A high school diploma would help me in getting into a good college so I can further my education and studying for a career that would make me great income. You see, all you gotta do is pretty much keep throwing out ideas, but make it make sense until you hit that, uh, what do they want? Da 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 da. Da, 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 da. Ah, until you hit eight sentences just keep throwing out ideas until you hit eight sentences and make sure that it all makes sense now i got an only five just because i didn't i needed just one more sentence but i was tired they wrote good job however the assignment calls for an eight sentence paragraph only and i did not do that so looking at the examination evaluation everything was good except for the eight sentence paragraph. I would have had a hundred, but I got a 95 instead. See that? People like me, I don't know what's wrong with us. It's like we could uh, achieve higher goals and do good, like good things, but we just legs. Okay, so now, Let's take a look at Chrome. See that? 95 and a 65. So, like I mentioned in my previous video, uh, by the time my grade gets here, I'm going to continue. I'm not going to wait. I did consumer math. I got 185, 100. And now I'm in earth science. 95, 95. And I got to do one, two, three, four four more and then I get my credit for this course and then I got one two three four five six that's the way I see it. I got six classes and then I got to choose five electives one two three four five I don't know what this is or what kind of electives I'll be choosing so I don't really see any options here I did check online and it does show like different things like music Spanish or some stuff like that but I don't know one, two, three, four, five, six. After I finish this, I'll have only six classes left. And then graduation. Okay, so right now I'm in Earth Science.
I've done, let's see, I have done one, two, and I got to take the third exam. And then I got three more right here. Currently right now, I'm at 9.5 credits. And my GPA went from 4.0 to 3.89 just because of this one retake. I haven't done a retake since I started all this. I mean, sure, look at those grades. But now you know, don't plagiarize everybody. I mean, I knew I was gonna get in trouble for it, but you know, I also knew that it wasn't gonna be so bad as to not get a warning. So it's good, I did get a warning. But my GPA, but probably by the time I finish doing all these other classes, maybe my GPA might go up some, maybe. Or maybe it just goes down. Maybe that's it is what it is. Okay, so thank you for sticking uh, all the way to the end of this video. Um, go ahead and subscribe. Click that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Go ahead and follow me on Twitter, Ramon92Malave, Instagram, King92Malave. If you got any questions, if you want to say hello, you can message me at, King, uh, at Snapchat, add me King Malave. All the information is right there in the top. And uh, if you want to sign up for Penn Foster, I have a link in the description below. You could click on that. If you have any other questions about Penn Foster, I had made videos like pretty much going through all like if you know how we do all of our dirt before we start something new. I did all that. I, did, I got a video showing you that stuff. Even the accreditation like I'm gonna you, I scroll all the way down, 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 down. Oh, not here. Somewhere else. Anyways, all the accreditations, they're all there. Like home, I am. Let's check how far I am. I am 40 43% done with my goal. I mean, it looks like a little bit, but I'm pretty much all the way there. But yeah, go ahead and click that subscribe button and sign up for Penn Foster if you don't have your high school diploma. We all went through things, but the goal here is to get that one piece of paper. <laughs> and rock it <laughs> anyways thank you for watching and i'll see you on my next video see ya